Hi, I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching Astrum. Hubble has released the zip file on their website containing the top 100 pictures Hubble has ever taken. What I will do over the course of this series is go through these pictures one by one and explain what it is you're looking at. And believe me, some of these pictures require an explanation. Episode 4 For the episode playlist, click on the annotation here or have a look in the description. Number 22, NGC 4449. At first glance, I thought this was one of the Magnetic Clouds, but it's actually a small, irregular galaxy in a galaxy group called Keens Venatici, about 12 million light years away. This means, like us, it is part of the Virgo supercluster, otherwise known as the local supercluster of galaxies. It is similar to the large Maglianic cloud in that it has a general bar shape, but the big difference is this is considered a starburst galaxy. It is very active in producing new stars, as can be seen here in these pinkish regions. Pink or red areas in a galaxy are generally a telltale sign of star formation. As stars surrounded by hydrogen gas ionize the hydrogen to glow red with intense radiation. Another telltale sign of high rates of star formation is the many blue stars you see in this picture. Blue stars are extremely hot, young and often massive stars that will burn out quickly because they get through their fuel so fast. Because these stars can only live to a certain age, they must have only been produced within the last few million years. And as we can see, there are many blue star clusters in this galaxy. This starburst is thought to be because of galaxies interacting with NGC 4449. If we zoom out a bit, we can see this trail of red stars, perhaps the remains of a spheroid galaxy passing through NGC 4449, and it's stretched by this tidal effect. Looking at the galaxy center, we see a bright white group of stars with some dark clouds of dust around it. Stars can form within clouds like these, this galaxy is 19,000 light years across. Number 23, HD 97950. This spectacular superstar cluster is found within NGC 3603, an H2 nebula. It is incredibly pretty and has been studied a lot because it's found in the Carina spiral arm of the Milky Way roughly 20,000 light years away. NGC 3630 is interesting to astronomers because it is the most massive visible cloud of glowing gas and plasma known as an H2 region in the Milky Way and the superstar cluster has the densest concentration of stars known in our galaxy. The UV radiation and stellar winds have carved into this surrounding dust producing these beautiful shapes but also giving us an unobscured view of the superstar cluster. Stars of note in this cluster are Share 25, a star 60 times the mass of our Sun and reaching the end of its life cycle. It's expected to go supernova any time now as it's already thrown off matter in a similar manner to what has been seen in other supernovae. We also have the three main stars in the heart of the cluster barely distinguishable in the center of these images here. All three are wolf Rayet stars, each about a hundred times the mass of the Sun and millions of times more luminous. Two of them are incredibly close together as part of a binary star system, taking only 3.5 days to orbit one another. This means they are practically touching, no doubt exchanging a lot of mass as well as having an incredible tidal influence on each other. Zoom in out a bit, we see that visually NGC 3630 is right next to another nebula, NGC 3576. But in actual fact, this other nebula is much closer, only about half the distance to us. They just so happen to be visually aligned. Number 24, Messier 74. On first glance at this image, I thought it was another viewpoint on the famous galaxy we've already looked at, the Whirlpool Galaxy. 
and putting them side by side, these galaxies do look remarkably similar. They are both grand designed spiral galaxies for a start, and have similar dust patterns weaving through their arms. But putting them side by side, you can tell that there are slight variations in these two galaxies. M74's arms are lined with hot blue stars, with pink and red star forming regions dotted all over. You may think the arms of the galaxies like this are static arms rotating around the nucleus of the galaxy, but actually they are the visual effect of density waves. As gas and dust orbits the galaxy, they pass through the galaxy's density waves, which compresses the gas and dust and causes stars to form. Existing orbiting stars also clump up in these density waves. A lot of these stars will be blue and only short-lived, perhaps completing their life cycle in only a few million years. M74 is about 32 million light years away and has a low surface brightness, making it one of the most difficult Messier objects for amateur astronomers to observe and giving it the nickname the Phantom Galaxy. It is probably just a little smaller than our own Milky Way galaxy, containing about 100 billion stars and being 95,000 light years across. It sits in the M74 group, a small, little, remote group of galaxies. Number 25, ARP 148. So, first impressions, what do you think this could be? Pause the video and take a guess in the comments if you want. Well, this bizarre shape, found a staggering 500 million light years away, is a galaxy and is nicknamed Male's Object. It is in fact most likely to be two merging galaxies, the initial collision theorized to have created a shockwave which drew matter into the center before it propagated out into this ring you see. The tail is a streamer of stars from one of the galaxies, further suggesting this is an ongoing collision. Interestingly, and on a little side note, the ARP catalogue is the atlas of peculiar galaxies. Number 26, Able 2218. Now if you thought the last image was an impressive distance away, have a look at this one. Able 2218 is an impressive cluster of galaxies 2.1 billion light years away. Clusters like these are particularly scientifically interesting because these galaxies' immense gravity bends the light around them, acting as a magnifying glass to see galaxies even further behind them. These long arcs you see in the image are actually distant galaxies' light, stretched and warped by the gravity of the nearer galaxy cluster. In this image is perhaps the most distant galaxy known at an estimated 13 billion light years away. In this image it's barely visible, but in an enhanced version, we can make out its stretched appearance. Because of this lensing effect, the galaxy appears twice in this image, here as well as here. We see it from Earth as it was only 750 million years after the Big Bang, meaning we're looking back in time to really the early universe. There are around 10,000 galaxies in this image. Number 27, Able 1703. This is another galaxy cluster, doing the same lensing effect we looked at in the previous image. I want to explain in a little more detail about how this lensing effect works. Firstly, we look at a distant, massive object. Gravity is theorized to warp space-time perhaps a topic I'll come to in another video, but often elliptical galaxies are the biggest galaxies in existence, and the more massive the galaxy, the bigger the warping effect on spacetime. You can see this with the lensing effect around the big elliptical galaxy in the middle of this image. As spacetime is warped, light is bent around the galaxy, and if it's aligned right, it gives us a magnified view of the other side of the galaxy. It's a natural, handy magnifying glass just floating in space. And about this galaxy cluster, 
Able 1703 is around 3 billion light years away. Sadly, we've come to the end of another episode, but hopefully you've enjoyed it and learnt more about some of the mysteries of our universe. If you want more, don't forget to subscribe, as I'll be making more in this series, as well as other space videos in the future. Share if someone you know would enjoy this video, and thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time.